Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the square root of x minus 2 equals the cube root of x plus 2, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, obviously, for these kinds of equations, the typical method is getting rid of all the radicals. Since we have a 2 and a 3, and their least common multiple is 6, we can go ahead and raise both sides to the 6th power. That will eliminate both radicals. First of all, if you have the square root, that would mean something to the power 1 half, and 6 times that is going to give us a 3. So this left-hand side is going to become x minus 2 to the third, and the right-hand side is going to be like x plus 2 to the power 6 over 3, which is x plus 2 to the second power. So we get the square and the cube after, you know, raising both sides to the sixth power. And now we can go ahead and expand everything, right? I mean, this is going to be x cubed. And then for this, you can use several different formulas. I like the, the shortcuts, but you can also use the binomial theorem. x cubed minus 3x squared times 2 plus 3 times x times 2 squared, which is 4 minus 2 cubed. And then on the right-hand side, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4. Let's simplify this, put everything on the same side. This is minus 6, minus 1, minus 7x squared. This is 12x, minus 4x is going to give us plus 8x, and then minus 12, minus 8, minus 4. And it's equal to 0, and this is a cubic equation. Can you solve it? Possibly. One of the methods that you can use is the rational root theorem. You can kind of look at factors of negative 12 until you find something that works if there are any rational solutions. If there aren't any rational solutions, then this theorem doesn't work and you can go ahead and try the cubic formula, which kind of means you need to get rid of the x squared and use the formula. So on and so forth. But this, I think, is going to have a rational solution, right? And that solution is actually going to be coming from factors of 12. So they're going to be plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, and then plus minus 6, and plus minus 12. A lot of candidates, but one of them is going to work. You can go ahead and test it out and find out which one it is. Because I'd like to uh, proceed with a different approach. Okay, let's take it from here. Square root of x minus 2 equals the cube root of x plus 2. And by the way, at this point, you probably guessed one of the solutions. And you're totally uh, fine with that. But uh, let's just do this uh, with a different method. So I want to go ahead and actually set these equal to something. How about a? So from here, we get the following. This, since the square root of x minus 2 is equal to a, that would give me x minus 2 equals a squared, right? And then the second one is going to give me x plus 2 equals a cubed. It kind of seems like we're doing the same thing with the squares and cubes because we had a cubic. But trust me, this equation is going to be a lot easier to deal with. So let's go ahead and subtract this way. That gives us 4 equals a cubed minus a squared. Okay, so far so good. This is a very simple equation to solve and you can definitely guess and check. You could also do this with the other equation, but it's a lot harder. Or you could just guess and check the original cubic. But again, how would you find the other solutions, right? Because there's, uh, we're supposed to have three solutions. So let's take this expression and see how we can uh, factor it. We can make it factorable. First of all, notice that a equals 2 is the solution because 8 minus 4 equals 4. Awesome. a equals 2 means what? If you set x minus 2 to a squared, or the square root of x minus 2, it doesn't matter. Let's just use x minus 2 equals a squared, which is 4. From here, you're going to get x equals 6 real quick, right? Or the other one. But let's go ahead and see what's more important here is that we need to factor this, right? Since a equals 2 is a root, I can kind of do the following. First, put everything on the same side. And then, split up the negative 4 into a cubed minus 8 minus a squared plus 4. And now, this becomes factorable by grouping. This is difference of two cubes. Notice that there is an identity, a formula. And this is minus a squared minus 4. Therefore, it's factorable by difference of two squares. Awesome. And then a minus 2 is a common factor. Take it out. 
and then you're going to get a squared plus 2a plus 4 minus a minus 2. And if you simplify the second factor, you're going to get a squared plus a plus 2 equals 0. Obviously, a equals 2 is already known. The other one from the quadratic formula is going to give us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be an 8. So we're going to get non-real solutions. Does this make sense? So from here, a can be written as negative 1 plus minus the square root of 7i divided by 2. But remember, a is equal to something. What is a equal to? a is equal to the square root of x minus 2, right? So I'll set it equal to square root of x minus 2, and then square both sides, and you should get the other solutions. Of course, after this, you have to add 2 to both sides, so on and so forth. But that part is left as an exercise for you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.